This is John Cola with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to share with you guys once and for all the best apple juice money can buy or can't, and that actually you got to make it yourself. So what I have today are three different juicers using three different extraction processes, and I'm going to process apples into them. That being said, I know a lot of you guys don't have juicers, so you can't juice. So then I'm going to share with you guys. What juice can you buy in the store that's actually the healthiest apple juice? So I got a couple examples here, bought at a local store. We got the Langer's, right? The Langer's. It says, uh, Langer's Apple Juice Cocktail from Concentrate. Is this good? Or is the Welch's uh, Apple Juice, it says 100% Juice Apple. Is that good? Or is this brand, uh, the organic one, <laughs> uh, organic apple cold press. Hey, it's cold press. That must be good. And it's dark. Is that the better one? Right? So first off, many apple juices sold in the store, such as this one, you know, it says it contains 30% juice. So wait a second. This is not really juice. It's 30% juice. What's the other 70%? You know, well, it's ingredients. Filtered water, apple juice, concentrate, sugar, citric acid, natural flavor, pectin, caramel color, and ascorbic acid, vitamin C. And this is actually quite uh, clear. You can almost see through it. It looks like kind of some pea. Next in line, we have the Welch's. At least this has, says 100% juice. And it is, uh, you know, apple juice from concentrate, filtered water, apple juice, concentrate, ascorbic acid, vitamin C, and malic acid for tartness. And then this one over here is 100% juice, and the ingredients are simply just apples. So here's the thing, right? The more processing that happens to your juice and the other things added, in my opinion, lower the nutritional content. Okay, I know there's some YouTube videos that say apple juice is worse for you than a Coke. And the 100% juice that's Welch's has gone through a process of being uh, juiced and then concentrated and heated up and then reconstituted into this with other, you know, vitamins added because they're probably missing because of all the processing and also, in addition, microfiltration. So I want you guys to pay attention to the colors of these juices, right? This one's probably the caramel coloring, making it this color. But this color is just basically 100% apple juice. If you guys can see that, it's uh, pretty much clear. And if we look at this one, this is the cold press juice. It's nice and dark. So I'll be pulling out, you know, basically some science talking about the, you know, how it's much more beneficial to have a more darker, uh, you know, unfiltered juice because there are more nutrients, polyphenols, and more importantly, the fiber. The soluble fiber that dissolves in the water when you have more of a cloudy juice. So yeah, that, these are the commercially available ones. But you know what? Here's the thing. A lot of the studies that show apple juice is bad for you are, are based on juices that you can pre-buy. So these juices are shelf stable, you know, um, and are heat processed. Whereas this one is cold pressed, needs to kept, be kept refrigerated. So I definitely say, you know, if it has to be a cold... Um, you know, kept cold, it's going to have more nutrients than the, uh, than the ones that are shelf stable. This has been uh, HPP high pressure processed, um, you know, so it will kill the bacteria and to probably, uh, you know, keep some of the enzyme uh, content because it's not technically being heated up too hot, although many juices can be pasteurized. That being said, when we're going to juice our own apples right here, right now, uh, using fresh apples, using three different juicers, you know, I basically just wash the apples. These are raw apples, produce, not heat processed. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do any additional filtering to these juices. So we're going to keep more nutrition. We're going to keep more antioxidant compounds. We're going to keep more vitamin C. Some of these juices will keep more uh, fiber, uh, including the soluble and insoluble fiber. And some juices will oxidize some of the apples as we create it. So I'm going to bring you guys along in the process and show you guys the process of juicing, more importantly how long it takes, and also compare the results at the end to these store-bought uh, juices that we have right here so you guys can learn which one of these juicers makes the healthiest apple juice and I'll be pulling out some science at the end of this episode to basically confirm what I'm sharing with you. All right, so this is not by any means a, a yield comparison, although I have pre-weighed out 773 uh, grams of apples in each one of these jars, you know, that I will be juicing 
um, each in each one of these machines. So now we're all set up, ready to juice. We got all the collection cups uh, for the juicers all set up, ready to go. Let me go ahead and introduce the different juicers I'll be using today. Uh, first, I'll be using the Breville Juice Fountain Cold. While this is a uh, called cold in the title, it is not a cold press. It runs at a high speed and oxidizes phytonutrients as it's coming out because literally air pushes the juice out of the machine. Uh, you know, so I'm not a big fan of this style machine and I only use it when I'm making demonstration videos like this. Uh, next we have the Kuvings EVO820. This is a slow juicer, a uh, cold press juicer, and it uh, is made by Kuvings. It has a wide three inch feed chute, which I like a lot, so I'll be able to just dunk the whole apples in there without any kind of pre-cutting. Uh, it runs at a low and slow RPM. Uh, I think it's around 60 RPM. So it literally crushes and squeezes out the juice with very little oxidation. It will leave more uh, pulp in the juice, uh, being uh, insoluble as well as the soluble uh, fiber. Uh, this is the style I personally use at home, and other slow juicers um, you know, may work similar to this, although the vertical slow juicers are best if you want to juice straight fruits. Other uh, slow juicers, such as the horizontal or the twin gears, can literally choke on juicing straight fruits because the fruits can be too soft. All right. Also, very important when using any slow juicer, always very important to select the most hard and firm apples as possible. If you select soft apples, mealy apples, old apples to juice in a slow juicer, specifically any type, uh, it will result in more of an apple sauce consistency. This can be an issue when you're buying apples about now, uh, you know, being it, uh, you know, February or March or April, because apples were harvested last year in September, being, being uh, you know, sitting in cold storage in an oxygen deprived environment, and they sell it to you now, and they, they basically, they're old, so they don't juice as well. So if you like, my performance is going down on my juicer, John, you know, it's probably the produce that you're juicing. If you're juicing apples, it will get more, you know, um, thick because of the older, softy, softer apples you're using. So make sure you use Granny Smith that will minimize that issue, but still can be problematic. All right. And finally, over here, we have the pure cold press juicer. This is the best two stage hydraulic cold press juicer that literally presses out the juice. So if you think about like, how do they make apple cider or how do they make apple juice in the olden days? Well, they ground up the apples and then basically they used a, a, a jack or a, a screw that basically pressed out the juice. So this is a, a process similar to the to probably all the juices that I showed you guys, the commercial ones are made in a, uh, you know, press a grinding and pressing style process with probably additional steps, whether that's HPP, you know, concentration or, you know, extra filtration. I'm just going to be using the standard press cloths that come with the pure machine. And I want to say right now, this will get the highest yield, and this is the best machine if you have soft and mealy apples to juice. This can easily handle soft and mealy, mealy apples. You know, I had some soft and mealy pears, probably that I should have ate, that were overripe, and I would not dare juice them in any other machine aside from the pure. So every different juicer has its pros and cons. And while you will see that the pure has a really good pro, because it probably is going to make the highest yield, there will also be a con that you're going to have to stick to the end of the episode to learn about. All right, so in any case, I've introduced the juicers. Next step is we're going to get juicing, so we're going to go ahead and use a stopwatch and time this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the Breville first, and I'll probably speed this up to save you guys some time. So I'm all done. I don't know if you guys can see the time on there, but it's basically 27.3 uh, on there. Happened really fast. And look what we got. We got, you know, for, in my opinion, it's a highly aerated juice. We have basically lots of froth. There's more froth, actually, than the juice that was created. And I'll hold this up because this will change over time. Um, the juice that we just created was almost see-through, kind of similar to the, uh, you know, commercial juices, all right? But it took about 30 seconds 
to juice this much and I don't know how much is in there because honestly I can't tell because it's a lot of foam. All right, so next let's go ahead and reset the stopwatch and we're gonna go ahead and juice in the Kuvings. Um, hit the start, turn it on and just drop in one apple at a time. We're gonna let the machine process one apple and wait for it until we put in the next apple. Once again, I will speed this up for you guys and uh, come back at you when we're about finished. All right, we just put the last apple into the Kuvings and sometimes the apple will sit on top of the auger and kind of like not go in until it finally kind of uh, hits a little bit and then it starts getting chopped up and then it'll get chopped up more and more. Now one of the things I don't like about the wide feed chute machines on the slow juicers is that there will always be some kind of excess pulp stuck in the top of the mechanism that does not get juiced and this is a trade off um, you know, that you're going to have for having the uh, wide feed chute that you can dump in large apples too. This has worked a lot uh, more slowly, um, created actually a fairly dry pulp that I'll show you guys at the end and actually we've created a lot of juice. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, maybe stop this. And it took actually a wee bit over uh, 2 minutes and 14 seconds. So say it took 2 minutes, you know, that's 4 times longer than the Breville. But, you know, it looks like we got, you know, something a lot different, <laughs> um, you know, with the Kuvings. So let's go ahead and shut this guy off. And I want to show you guys what this juice looks like. So you guys can clearly see this juice. Yes, there is absolutely some foam in there, but if we hold this up and due to the high speed, you know, all the apple juices will oxidize. But you can literally see on the bottom of this juice, it's almost it is see it's almost see through. Bottom of this juice is actually quite cloudy. Uh, this juice is already browning. This juice will start to brown probably in a little bit. But there's significantly more foam in the Breville juice, um, you know, than the the Kuvings juice. So this will be very important. Um, you know, aspect of the juices that I'll be talking about in just a little bit. Now I'll be juicing in the pure two-stage juice. The first step is grinding, the second step is pressing. Um, you know, these are single-step juicers, whereas they are continual, so you can keep putting produce in until the pulp bin gets too full. You can continue to juice. This is more of a batch juicer, so you gotta like put produce in, press it out, and then you gotta do more. Um, you know, this can also take some time so we're gonna learn how much time it takes and also see how much yield we get and meanwhile um, I'm gonna fast forward all this because I'm not gonna explain the process I have other videos in depth on each of these juicers I'll post links down below if you want to learn more about each of these specific juicers on their own alright so uh, with that let's go ahead and hit start and let's go ahead and turn this machine on and let's go ahead and put the apples right into the machine <laughs> Alright, so we're almost done juicing in the pure. We basically pressed out the apples and the, the goal is to wait till the stream breaks. Oops. So it's uh, now it's dripping, so it's pretty much about broke. You could let it run basically for another five minutes to get a few more drips. I don't think it's definitely worth it. The stream is broke. You're not going to get significantly more juice. Uh, once it comes down, I like to tip this up and then, um, you know, wait for some of the juice to drip out. Now let's go ahead and hit stop. Well, look at that. That took nearly five minutes. So the pure juicer to make this much juice took, you know, twice as long, a little bit over, you know, 2.5 times as long as the Kuvings did. And, you know, uh, still uh, a lot longer. <laughs> Was it five minutes versus 30 seconds? Ten times longer than the Breville. But let's take a look at what we got here. So look at this juice. As this juice immediately came out, it was a lot more brown. You know, browning is some oxidation that's occurring. You know, this juice wasn't that brown, but it turned pretty brown, but it's actually also very clear at the bottom. Uh, you know, whereas the Kuvings juice, I showed you guys right when it came out, it was pretty much looking nice. And even now, the bottom is still looking kind of nice, you know, so comparing the oxidation, you know, the, um, 
the slow juicer actually did the least oxidation. The oxidation is due to the pr primarily due to the high speed grinding. At the same time, you know, it has been shown through published studies that the pure juicer will create more enzymatic activity in the juice if, if enzymes are important to you. That being said, you know, the enzymes in the juice are reacting with the antioxidants, in my personal opinion, and lowering those at the same time. So you're going to trade off enzymes for some phytonutrients. To me, the phytonutrients are more important, all right? So anyways, let's go ahead and um, uh, put these up front and center for you guys, and we're going to go ahead and do a close-up on the yields. All right, so here are the three juices. Let's go ahead and zoom in on each one over on the Breville. Fairly easy to see the yield on that one. It's basically about a little bit over 300, you know, because I'm seeing like basically it starts getting into a foam layer, maybe 325, I don't know, maybe 350 at the absolute most, but then there's significant foam and also the browning that has occurred. Over on the Kuvings, this is actually quite difficult to determine the overall yield if you just look at the overall yield it's 300 but I want you guys to pay attention to that there are two distinct foam layers there's the 300 layer where you got more juice and then you have the from 300 up to like 500 which you can see is the dark like foam stuff right so that's actually uh, probably some uh, fiber in there so like some uh, insoluble fiber and then if we look above 500 then you know you clearly see the the light foam layer so I really, it's, 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 it'd be difficult to call that one. Maybe if I stirred it up, I could uh, see more clearly the yield. But, you know, I guess I'm going to say that it's maybe around 500 is the yield. But the other thing that I'm also going to tell you is that this is actually a really thick, um, you know, juice. Kind of more like, a, not like a smoothie, but more like a nectar. It's more like a nectar juice. If you ever had nectar juices that are like kind of thick and rich. And then over on the pure, pure, no hassle. No screwing around. That's like, uh, you know, about 460 milliliters, and that is straight juice. But I want you guys to look at the color in terms of least to most. So the most color, you know, the most browning happened in the pure, you know. My opinion is because of the enzymes. There's more enzymes and more oxidation that's happening in the grinding process. Um, so, yeah, that's really dark. And then if we go over the Breville... You know, yes, there's some oxidation in there as well, but it's, you know, a tad bit lighter than the pure, and also we did the pure juice last. Meanwhile, over on the Kuvings, you know, that's definitely darker, you know, than it was when it came out, but it's still significantly lighter than the others. You know, I believe this to be uh, due to less oxidation uh, due to the slow juicing process. All right, so you guys got to clearly see a close-up on the juices. What I want to do now is I'm going to stir these juices up. So maybe we'll start by stirring the slow juice up first. You know, I'm feeling definitely some resistance. It's definitely thick, more like a nectar for sure versus a thin juice. If you want the thinnest juice, of course, that's the pure. This is going to be the thickest juice, but also it will contain more fiber in there. We're going to go ahead and stir the Breville juice up and stir those bubbles into there, which I normally don't like to do, and there's lots of foam still happening in there. And you know, this is kind of, oh, there's like, kind of like, there's like big chunks and whatnot in here. So then we're gonna go ahead, after stirring, we're gonna go ahead and pour it out into three um, glasses so we could see the texture difference. So that's really like a nectar, right? If we used a uh, harder, firmer apples, you know, it'd be a bit less, but, you know, this is what the slow juicers do. They will give you more fiber, um, you know, in the juice, the sible, as well as the insible. Here's the Breville juice. Luckily, as I'm pouring it, a lot of the particulate, the thick, you know, froth stuff is staying in the jar. For practical purposes, let's go ahead and put these in the right order. And then over here is the pure juice. You know, and let's go ahead and pour this out. Now what I want to do is I want to show you guys actually um, what the pulp looks like that came out of each of the juicers. So we have a little tray here and I want to say that the pure juicer was absolutely the messiest. Um, you know, while juicing it did splatter a few things everywhere. The other juices were much, much cleaner, especially the Kuvings with a little flap so they don't get the drips. Um, but I want to show you guys the pulp. So 
Um, maybe we'll start over on the Breville pulp first. So taking the Breville pulp out, putting it on this little tray right here. There's lots of pulp that came out of the Breville, okay? And what we're gonna see in the pulp is that we will see literally chunks of apples that did not get juiced. I mean, here's a whole, you know, skins, and this is one of the tests they've done in the science that the, the high speed juicers don't grind up the seeds effectively or the skins so you get less polyphenols in your juice. So you gotta ask yourself, is it worth doing it fast so I can have juice versus not doing it, but you're gonna miss some of the different polyphenols and those are the healing compounds and juices in my personal opinion. Meanwhile, there's also lots of pulp here. The volume is so much because it also is quite wet still. And if we press that out, like if we put that in the pure, we could surely press out more out of that pulp and it will compact the pulp a lot. Meanwhile, on the Kuvings, there's some still pulp left in the machine, but the pulp that came out of the machine is a lot more small. It's a lot more compact. It's a lot more ground up, you know. Um, th we, there's no big chunks in here. It's, you know, it's pretty ground up pretty well. I see a seed that actually went through their hole. Um, you know, depending on the slow juicer, some slow juicers better grind seeds up than others. Uh, the Kuvings has more of a coarse grind, in my personal opinion. All right, yeah, I'm seeing a few you know, uh, pe large pieces of skin that just kind of just went through the Kuvings. Um, you know, uh, if you get a, ju a juicer that grinds better, it's going to extract more nutrients out of those skins and seeds that are quite uh, beneficial for us, all right? Here's a little bit more pulp from the Kuvings. Finally, let's check the pulp on the Pure. This always amazes me, the pulp and the Pure. Um, you know, so basically we're going to open this pressed cloth. And the, pre and the press cloth, you guys can see the pulp, and it's, it's kind of hard to, it's stuck on there. So that you got to clean this when you're done. And, uh, you know, I'd rather actually clean a juicing screen personally than apple apples on this press cloth because it's literally just ground in. It's like you got kids, they, you know, get a, they get a grass burn. <laughs> this is like ground in. It's like kind of not separating quite easily. And, uh, yeah, anyways. So I got to use my nails to scrape this stuff off. But if we look at this, you know, I mean, this pulp is, uh, is, is drier than all the other ones. You know, there are some, still some pieces of, uh, of skin that actually didn't completely get ground up. And I'm sure over, in, you know, we got another, another press cloth full of uh, the pulp here. I mean, this pulp is impressive. It is super dry. So if you want the most yield, <laughs> hands down, the pure is the juicer to go with for sure. Okay, so I want to talk about now, um, you know, all the juices have pretty much oxidized similar since I've actually mixed them up. I want to go ahead and bring out the commercial juices, including that, uh, you know, the uh, uh, HPP juice that's cold pressed and the Welch's juice that's completely clear. So, you know, none of the juices that we made after stirring up, you know, are completely clear like this, um, you know, so they all contain some levels of soluble fiber, although the soluble fiber levels are different in each juice that was created. And the whole point of this video is how much soluble fiber, which is this fiber that dissolves in water, is going into each juice because the soluble fiber matters. You know, you can watch my last episode, I made a science, I looked into the science of the soluble fiber. And according to science, Juice has soluble fiber. So when people exclaim, juice has no fiber, well, it depends on how the juice was made. Home juiced juice depends how the juice was made. Juices that are made at home will always have some soluble fiber. And in my opinion, the more filtration you do, the more soluble fiber that can be removed. So for example, on the Breville, on the Breville here, you know, the filtration that's happening is 100% due to the juicing screen here. This juicing screen has very small holes. I can kind of see through there, but they're micro fine holes. So this will leave a lot of the fiber behind the inside bowl and let not maybe not as much soluble fiber through. You know, even, even after that, we got the tubings. Let's go ahead and take this apart. I want to show you guys this juicing screen. Uh, this juicing screen also has holes in it. But the holes in it are a lot larger than the holes in the Breville. You know, uh, some juicers even come with coarse screens with even larger holes if you want to keep more of the fiber in there. Uh, you know, mostly it's keeping the 
insoluble fiber, but also, in my personal opinion, it'll let more soluble fiber through because the holes are bigger, and more importantly, and also in my personal opinion, it'll let more you know phytonutrients, polyphenols through because of the larger pore size. It's very important, right, to discuss. Finally, the pure juicer. You know, when you have to go through the pure juicer, you're not even going through a screen. So the screen holds, once again, Kuvings has the largest holes, the Breville, the Breville has the smallest holes, and the pure doesn't even have holes. You're going through a nylon press cloth that has a much smaller pore size. So you're going to hold back, like, virtually all the insoluble fiber, and in my personal opinion, keep less of the soluble fiber. So uh, how does this equate when we taste the juices? So let's go ahead and taste the Breville juice first. Mm. That's a pretty smooth juice. I feel a little bit of fiber, <clears throat> particularly in there, not much. Taste is pretty oxidized. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and try the Kuvings uh, juice. Mm. This is thick, guys. I mean, this is this is definitely, you know, a nectar, <laughs> a nectar of the gods, not a juice. So don't expect slow juices to make really good fruit juices. It will give you guys more fiber in there, which, in my opinion, can be of a great benefit. The way to reduce that is to juice it with other items that I'll give the juice more liquid content. So for example, jicama and apples or carrot and apples and juice a lot of uh, carrots with a few of those softer apples and it'll kind of blend in a lot nicer than making it super thick. Finally, we're going to go ahead and taste test. Oh, and that actually this juice tasted better. I didn't have like the bitter overtones with the Breville juice. I had kind of like bitter overtones. This actually just kind of tasted like a, a thick kind of like, a, you know, nectar slash smoothie. Not quite a smoothie because it's not that thick because smoothie keeps 100% of the fiber. We did remove some of the fiber. Finally, we're going to go ahead and try the Breville. Finally, we're going to go ahead and try the pure juice. Let's go ahead and see how this tastes. Mmm. Yeah, so that's actually quite clean. Less particulate than the Breville. Surely less particulate uh, than the Kuvings. It still kind of tastes a little bit hard. Maybe that hardness that I'm tasting, kind of like uh, like bitterness, is kind of like the oxidation that's occurred because when I drink the Kuvings juice, it's more smooth. I, I get like sweetness. I don't get this kind of like bitter stuff. I personally believe the bitterness is due to the oxidation because the juice did oxidize you know, was the oxidized the most out of all these three juicers, and you know, people will tell, the pure is the best juicer. You know, hey, it's the best juicer in terms of yield. You're hard pressed to beat the pure in, in most case, most all cases, there'll be few exceptions in terms of yield, but in the terms of oxidation, in my opinion, you could definitely beat the pure, you know, using a slow juicer. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about this, this uh, master's thesis uh, that was actually from, uh, it's titled, Quality and Stability of Shelf-Stable Pulp-Rich Fruit Juice. So they kind of probably talking about like juices like these that are commercially available. And it's uh, 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 presented to the faculty of the Graduate School of Cornell. So somebody actually had to, you know, write this to have a master's degree in science. So I'm sure it's uh, fully vetted and legit. So I want to read a couple highlights that I've highlighted. Okay. Pulpy juices had higher phenolonic and anthocyanin content and antioxidant capacity than clear juices of the same fruit type. The content was comparable to that of whole fruits. Surely, this juice, because it is a nectar, it is thick, <laughs> you know, has more soluble and insoluble fiber in there. And according to this paper, it says there's higher phenolonic and anthocyanin content and antioxidant capacity. So what does that mean for you guys? That means it's healthier for you guys to drink, right? Let's go ahead and move down. Pectin content of pulpy juices. Pectin is a soluble fiber. It, it may regulate the absorption of the blood sugar 
um, into your bloodstream. So pectin content of pulpy juices was comparable to that of whole fruits. So the pectin was very similar in the pulpy juices. So this would be more considered a pulpy juice, which is still rather thin because this juice is actually really close to what the pure is if you, you know, process this even further. Okay, I'll go on. There was almost no pectin in clear juices. Pulpy juices represent a rich source of sibyl fiber and one serving contains 0.7 to 11.6 grams of pectin. All right, so what, what are we learning? You know, maybe the reason why the apple juices that you buy and the tests that they've done and why this stuff is so bad and why it's so bad in some of the studies is because number one, they might be using a diluted apple juice that still has corn syrup in there. Number two, it is ultra processed. It's clear, it looks like pee to me, and to me it's about as worth as much as my pee. My pee is probably more valuable technically. Um, because they are removing all the soluble fiber in there. Meanwhile, this juice, you know, is more rich, more thick, more delicious, has more uh, pulp and polyphenols and pectin in there than this juice but why not take the this juice to the next level? How do you take it to the next level? The next level is the pure juice because basically it's made through the same grinding and pressing process, but you are not pasteurizing it and not ultra filtering it, and you know exactly the process. But if you even want to get better than that, in my personal opinion, you want to go with a slow juicer. The slow juicer, this is a thick juice. If you want a thick juice, don't get a slow juicer when you're juicing fruits. Now, if you're juicing vegetables and greens and celery, this is not gonna be that thick. Apples have lots of the pectin, and that's what's causing this, this thickness, and especially as the apple gets softer, this juicer is more effective at extracting it out. In addition, in my personal opinion, um, you know, this juicer style is also more effective at liberating some of the different polyphenols and nutrients from seeds than other style machines and maintaining you know, more of them due to the low RPM and minimal oxidative damage and the larger whole size. That's very important. So yeah, this will give you the most fiber, um, you know, soluble and insoluble. Also, the probably the most antioxidants and polyphenols, you know, and it's these components that can help regulate the blood sugar of the sugar into our blood. Not that I'm going to ever recommend drinking straight fruit juice as I did today. You know, surely if you, know, you have a child and they're drinking Coke, surely an apple juice made in the Kuvings is way different than the Welch's, way different than the 30% you know, juice drink or cocktail that's being sold. But you know, my personal opinion, and I, I rarely juice straight fruits, is to drink vegetable juices. Green juices, including leafy green vegetables, you know, green vegetables such as celery and also even roots such as carrots are highly nutritious. And if you got to juice those guys, put a couple apples in to make it taste good, I wouldn't worry about it. But I want you guys to use the best juicer to make the best apple juice. So hopefully after watching this episode today, you learn about some of the different studies and some of the different fiber content in the juices, some of the different polyphenol content and more about how long it took to use each of these juicers and some of the pros and cons of each uh, juicer will make when juicing specifically these softer apples that I have today. If you guys enjoy my content and want to support me, please make your juicer purchase at discountjuicers.com. That allows me to continue to you know, do the education, to look up scientific studies that I do most every day, you know, to buy my apples, to make you guys these videos so I can share with you guys knowledge literally that you're not going to find unless you dig through journal studies and have been juicing for a long time and have all the experience I do. I'm the number one juicer expert in the world and I'm here to ensure that you guys get the exact right juicer. I have over 500 videos on this channel comparing this juicer to this juicer, this juicer to this juicer, all different kinds of comparisons so that you will get the right juicer style for you. I'm confident that I have the right juicer style for you, but you guys need to figure out what it is. And if, even if you want to, if you live in the United States, I'm glad to consult with you. Send me an email through the contact link down in the description below. Tell me your requirements. Tell me exactly what you're juicing and the recipes specifically, because as we learned, some juices will better or worse handle apples, but some juices will better or worse handle other produce, as well as some of the you know features that you would like in a juicer. And I'm glad to uh, help you 
get the right juicer for you the first time so that returns are unnecessary in which waste you know carbon put more carbon in the atmosphere because all the extra shipping because somebody didn't get the right juicer the first time so I want to thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that will support me and I want to thank you guys who have supported me in the past so I can continue my mission to educate the world about the power of fruits and vegetables and the juices that they're created and while you know apple juice may not be that bad <laughs> if you make it in the cubings because you get a lot more fiber and actually a lot better taste I think in this juice off, I'm going to say that Kuvings wins. Uh, link down below if you want to get this exact machine that I use today, the Kuvings EVO820. If you guys enjoyed this episode, want more videos like this, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, please be sure to share this video with others so that they can be more familiar with the different kinds of apple juices and why some apple juices may actually not be that healthy for you. And more importantly, learn about the healthiest apple juice that you guys could make at home, uh, you know, with organic apples like I use today. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button, uh, you know, so that you can be made aware of my new and upcoming episodes that come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click, click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel, dedicated to comparing and contrasting all different major juicer styles and juicers with you guys that are available in the United States so that you guys can get the exact best juicer for your needs. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.